So you taking pictures again, huh? Oh, yes, sir. How are you doing today? Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I said thy face, Lord, I will see. Hide not thy face far from me, and put not thy servant away in anger, for thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. For when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path for false witnesses have risen up against me. And such as breathe out cruelty, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and God will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall? I send it to the hill of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place. He who have clean hands and a pure heart, and have not lifted up his soul under vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your head, O you gates, 
even lift above the everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates, even lift them up, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. A mortal born of woman in a few days and full of trouble. Come forth like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and doesn't last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are numbered and the number of their months is known to you. And you have appointed the vows that they cannot pass. Look away from them and desist that you may enjoy like laborers their days. He said, naked came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, will not we fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with the tumble, there is a river. The streams where I make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. It shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, see what desolations he has brought on the earth. He maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth, he breaks the bow, cutteth the spear and the sun to be still. <laughs> and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He that dwelleth in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. Do not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that waits at noonday. Ah, uh, family, a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you, for he will command his angels concerning you, guarding you in all your ways. On their hands they shall bear you up, so you will not dash your foot against a stone. Those who love me, I'll deliver I will protect those who know my name. When they call upon me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. A little later on, David said these words, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Come on, do I have a prayer church? Oh, magnify. In moments like this, let us magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt God's name together. You heard the Apostle Paul said, In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Can we give God a great thanks for the life and legacy of Emmanuel Prince Post Senior? Come on, give it up, give it up. That God be glory. Great things he has done. Amen. And we're going to ask that you join in with the choir. And as we join in, it is well with our soul. You know the words. Let's be one big choir. This song will help you today and in the days to come.
truly know that God's got it when you can say, it is well. In spite of what I'm going through, it is well with my soul. Amen. It'll be well with our soul as we go no further uh, without uh, going to the Lord in prayer as Pastor Marcus Jennings, Pastor of Woodlawn Avenue Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia, shall come uh, to give us our prayer of comfort, followed by our Old Testament readings uh, by our own Reverend Haroline Shackleford, Pastor of the St. Paul and the Church in Portsmouth, uh, Virginia, and a New Testament lesson by Pastor Michael Keyes, Pastor of the historic New Hope Baptist Church in Virginia Beach. Say good morning to each and every one of you. To the family, I want to extend our condolences, of course, to you. I want you to know that uh, you all have a special place in our family. As a matter of fact, uh, we're well represented. Wouldn't an avenue at this church where you stand, please? Let her know that, you, that you're here. You know we love you. You're part of our family. And if there's anything on earth that we can do, please don't hesitate to ask. You know that uh, it's a tough time. We're living in a tough time. But I want you to know that we serve a God of tough times. If you look back over the history of our people. God has always been always. with us. And one thing that God can't do, He can't ever stop being God. That's right. That's right. And He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. All right. So as we go to the throne of grace, think about the God who's always there. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you today. Not because we understand everything, but we do understand this. Yes. That you are God and it's your God all by yourself. Lord, we know it was you who flung the stars in the sky. It was you who told the oceans how far they could go. Yes, yes, yes. It was you who pushed up the mountains and scooped out the valleys. Yes. Father, we understand that if you can do all of that, <laughs> that you can take care of every one of our needs. Yes. So, Father, I'm asking for the extra dispensation of grace upon this family. Yes, yes. Touch them, Father. Yes, yes. Dry their weeping eyes. Yes. Turn the tears of sadness into tears of joy oh, yeah. as they remember Brother Craig and remember the father, the husband, the yeah. son, yeah. grandson, nephew, uncle, oh, yeah. and neighbor, and friend. Yeah. That those memories live forever in the hearts and minds yeah. as, they, as they reminisce about a good day. A good man who took care of his family. Oh, yeah. right. Who for all intents and purposes showed the world what a man, a family man, a husband, what a good husband right. ought to be. Right. Continue to bless them, Father. Strengthen them. Guide them along the way. Help them to understand, Father, that you don't make mistakes. And in the time of need, Father, I, I, I know there's going to be some times, Father, where they're a little weak and they're beyond understanding because our minds can't comprehend everything that you do. 
Help us not to lead to our own understanding. But understand this. That a star slinging, ocean holding God. He doesn't make mistakes. And if he can do all of that, there's nothing that he won't do for those who trust and believe. Help them believe in you, Lord. Help them to lean to your word. Help them to read your word and know. That when we woke up this morning and right. see the sun still shining, yeah. that it was in accordance with your word. Yeah. As the planets continue to rotate around the sun, Lord, in perfect order, that it was done in accordance to your word. Yeah. Help them to know, Father, that we can trust your word. Yeah. That we can, Father, know without a doubt that you're faithful to those who continue to hold on to your word. Strengthen them as each day goes by. Let them know, Father, that you're with them always. And give them the peace according to your word that surpasses all understanding. And Father, when they remember, they can remember their father, their brother, help them to remember that it was by your grace and mercy that he tarried with us from the moment of his birth to this present moment. Oh, yes. You knew that this hour would come. That we would be gathered here today to say, I'll help them see you later. Yes. Give us peace, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Testament scripture lesson is found in the 23rd Psalm and I will be reading it in its entirety and using the message version and it reads thusly God my shepherd I don't need a thing you have bedded me down in lush meadows you find me quiet pools to drink from True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Craig knew when the way went through Death Valley, but he was not afraid because he knew his shepherd was with him. Family, may you find comfort, hope, encouragement, and peace as you read the word of God to give you strength in the days ahead. God bless you. New Testament reading. We'll find 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 51, these words are phrased in the King James Version. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. O death, where is thy sting? Yeah. O grave, where is thy victory? Yeah. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. 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 The church say amen. 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 We thank God now we're going to be blessed with a comforting solo by Sister uh, Rita Winfield. If you'll come at this time. Amen. If you'll come right to this microphone right here. God bless you.
very sweet and wonderful and comforting version of Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you again. At this time, Sister Janice Elliott, our Director of Christian Education here at Bethel, she's going to come and lift up our acknowledgments at this time. to read with heartfelt sympathy in your loss. There is no way to lessen the sorrow of losing someone so precious to you. But please remember that others care very much and wish you strength and comfort at this time. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, ETA Phi Omega Chapter. sympathy. <clears throat> Holistic Care, Home Health Agency, Incorporated. God heals, he cares. Signed by other members of the Holistic Care team. <clears throat> the Pulse Family. Thinking of you and asking God to assure you of his love and care. God's blessings. WABC Deacons Ministry. Brother Robert and Sister Madeline, at, at a time when words are hard to find, just want you to know you're in my thoughts and prayers with sympathy. Bethel AME Church Comfort Ministry. With sympathy. Wishing you many peace filled memories. Thinking of you during this difficult time. Love, Reverend Benz. <coughs> November 16, 2024. Our condolences to the family of Brother Craig Fultz Sr. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46 and 1. Reverend Andre P. Jefferson Sr., ministerial staff, officers, members of Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church of Hampton, Virginia, extend our prayers of comfort, condolences, and love to you and the loss of your loved one, Brother Craig Folks, Sr. of El Paso, Texas. We ask God, our Heavenly Father, to secure you and your family in his arms of love. We humbly pray and believe that he will. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 and 5. The Bible tells us in Revelations 21, 3 and 3 and 4. And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any pain, any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Our God is too wise to err and too just to be unkind. Keep the faith, don't waver, continue to trust him, and we will be in constant prayer for you. The Bethel Church family shares your pain and your grief. And we believe that Brother Craig is now resting in the arms of Jesus Christ. He is at peace with God, free from pain and all cares of this world. Amen. Sincerely in Christ, Andre P. Jefferson Sr., pastor, and the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church family. Bethel's resolution to the family of our late brother, Emmanuel C. Fultz, Sr. The just man walketh in his integrity. 
his children are blessed after him. Proverbs 27. Whereas it pleased our Almighty Father to carry to his heavenly home our dear brother, Emmanuel Folt Sr., on Thursday, October 31st, 2024. Whereas he was born in Burlington, North Carolina, August 16, 1956, to the eldest the eldest of three siblings, born to brother Robert and sister Madeline Foltz. Whereas he attended elementary schools in Minot, North Dakota, and Mount Clemens, Michigan. Junior high in Kansas City, Missouri. High schools, Great Falls, Montana, graduating from Kikatan High School in Hampton. Whereas brother Craig continued the military family tradition Entered the United States Navy, Norfolk, Virginia, in 1977. He served faithfully for 24 years, followed by a civil service career with technologies Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. Whereas, on November 2nd, 1978, Brother Craig married the love of his life, Ms. Colonna G. Wilson. And this union grew with Katina, Justice and Emmanuel Jr. He has 10 grandchildren and six great grandchildren. Whereas Brother Emmanuel loves sports, playing in the Little League and Senior League. He also coached voluntarily his son's youth sports league, the Atlanta Braves. He added to these military. The, he added to these the military base basketball team. Whereas his additional pastime was traveling, playing pool, and enjoying the favorite, his favorite football teams. Therefore, be it resolved, our pastor, Reverend Andre Pierre Jefferson Sr., the officers and members of Bethel African Methodist Church, do hereby express our sympathy, our sincere, heartfelt sympathy, and we hope this resolution will lighten your bereavement. Be it also resolved, you will continue to seek God's guidance and remember, he is too wise to err and too just to be unkind. Done by the order of Reverend P. Andre P. Jefferson Sr., officers and members of Bethel Amy Church on this 16th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2024. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm hath bound the restless wave, who biddeth the mighty ocean deep, his own anointed limits keep. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee, for those in peril on the sea. U.S. Navy hymn. Reverend Andre Pierre Jefferson, Sr., Pastor. Ms. Lisa McCaskill, Church Secretary. Ms. Ellen Stewart, Resolution Clerk. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Elliot. At this time, uh, there is an opportunity uh, for persons who'd like to give uh, reflections and on the uh, life of Brother Craig. Uh, you have two minutes, two A and B minutes. Amen. <laughs> and so we're going to ask that you come. And I'm the traffic cop, but uh, we ask that you come. We certainly want to hear some living reflections on brother. You can come at this time to this microphone. God bless you. transition and some of them wind up finding that uh, Robin and Flora Sr. You know, had some, uh, they were strict disciplinarians. So I had a funny, 
I talked to my sister would talk is about maybe Craig and his red back. <laughs> Craig, had a, Craig had a shiny plastic bag, and you know, he didn't want to share it with anybody. <laughs> he didn't want anybody to use it, so. Uh, when we, we said, like, okay, we don't, we don't know how this is going to end, but it ain't going to end well for Craig. On it. <laughs> so it came, to, it came to pass that Craig, whatever happened, uh, he, got whoop, he got a whooping <laughs> behind that bag. And the only thing we, we have a memory firm about Craig saying, give me my back back, give me my back back, give me my back back. And then uh, that was uh, one of Craig's fondest memories that we have of Craig. Uh, other thing about, about Craig is that he, he uh, chose the Atlanta Braves as his team. Wow. And they were in bad shape at that time when he chose them. <laughs> but uh, I, I asked him, I said, why? I said, why don't you choose the Braves? I'm from Atlanta, man. I said, why are you picking the Braves? But he said it was something about the team that he liked. Started wearing his Braves jersey. And you, you probably got, anybody here know that you, when you saw him, he might have had that Braves jersey on. He wore it religiously. And so he loved his Braves. And the Braves actually improved, you know, got a World Series. And so I don't know what Craig did, but, uh, but uh, I appreciate his input for doing that. But, you know, Craig's like a brother, you know. You know, he, and he was serious about his family, you know, holding the family reunion. I can still remember him. Me and him out there throwing the ball to EC. I don't know if EC remember that. You know, we, you know, he he was proud of EC for uh, uh, being a wide receiver. So I said, let me test him out. So I threw a few passes to him. I said, yeah, I think he got potential. And uh, he did. He did make a college uh, receiver. So those are some of the things I can remember. So I said, rest in rest uh, rest in peace, my brother. God's grace to you on that. served together. We served in the military. And I'm going to leave some things unsaid. They just, they just need to stay right there. Uh, EC and I did a lot of damage. But there was no greater lover of people when, when he said he had your back. He had your back. And as we served, it just reminded me as we grew closer and closer what Jesus said. I no longer call you servant, but I call you my friend. Cat, Nikki, Justice, EC, I just want you to know that whatever the rest of your life brings you, if you need or want anything that you think I can help you with, I'm available. Good afternoon, church. Uh, first, uh, condolences to the family, to Kat, all the children, brothers and sisters. I met E.C. and Kat when they moved into my neighborhood in Virginia Beach um, some years ago, uh, across from me, and, and uh, I was out there the other day. And uh, I still own the house, but the house across from me was theirs, and they sold it before they moved to Texas. And one of the first things that E.C. did when he moved in was he had the shutters and the garage doors painted that Redskin in Burgundy. <laughs> and over the years, I would go over and I'd tease because I was a Cowboys fan, and I'd go over and I'd tease because I was a Cowboys fan. We in church, we in church. I'm getting ready to get outside. <laughs> But um, I used to go over and I'd always tease 
team, especially when Dallas played the uh, Cowboys and stuff, and we got to know each other. Cat was teaching at Princess Anne High School, and he would talk about my three special needs kids, and they would help me get through some of those traumatic situations. Um, so I was, after a few years, I went over to EC, and we were getting ready to play, and I said, listen, EC, I understand you're a Redskins fan, at least you think you are, but you know, you can come out the closet, you can come on over and be a Dallas fan. And he was like, man, I'm going to be a Redskins fan until I die. So I looked at him, I said, you may be a Redskins fan, but you're still driving that Dallas Blue Cadillac. <laughs> a few weeks or months later, he traded that car in and came back driving a black Cadillac with some white walls. I'm going to miss my friend, and I'm going to tell you what. We play you guys on November 24th, That's right. That's right. and I will be praying for a win for my friend. Thank you. Certainly with condolence to anyone that I haven't shared condolence with thus far. I have a few reflections. Uh, one, a early reflection. One sort of a, a medium, a mid, mid reflection, and a very recent reflection. The early reflection is um, Craig, when he finally got you know, settled here in Virginia after his Navy travels, uh, came over. Uh, here and, and whether you know it or not, uh, Junior really liked to fish. And so one of my real deep memories about one of our fishing trips, uh, I was the boat operator, I was the captain, and so we had, and this is, I'm talking about the other EC, the, the young EC. And so we, we were together for training, we had to go through training, uh, Junior had to teach us how to fish. <laughs> And so we had those ventures out in the bay, uh, being trained how to fish. Uh, and EC, I hope you remember those things he, he taught us about uh, fishing. We had some ventures where the weather would be a little whatever. And he, uh, through those ventures, I got the name of Skipper, Skipper D. And it's interesting when I met, when EC came in yesterday evening, I greeted, he greeted me. The first thing he said was, what's up, Skipper D? <laughs> so that is kind of stuck. One of the mid uh, reflections is when, uh, some years back, probably almost 20 years now, uh, the men of the church had uh, uh, sessions on Saturday mornings, 8 o'clock Saturday mornings, all the men got together for about eight weeks or so uh, to go through the course experiencing God. That's right. yeah. Experiencing yeah. God. Uh, and we had those tables set up in the fellowship hall, probably about four or five men per table or small groups, and we went through those sessions religiously, 8 o'clock on Saturday mornings for, for that session. Craig was at my table, and so I had the opportunity to, to study and learn with him. Uh, Craig kept a pretty tight perimeter around his feelings and emotions. He was tight with what he felt. But during the course of those eight weeks, uh, and myself and others had an opportunity to, to look at how we look at God, who God is to us, to revisit our view of where God is and who God is. Uh, and so I had the privilege to experience Craig sharing in that small group uh, his relationship with the Lord. Uh, and how it had grown, it was growing, he reconnected to that. Uh, and then I shared with, with Junior and and I said, you know, that's one of those places that that's really important. Because you know sometimes folks will look at the life you live and how you journey and how you travel, especially if you're in the Navy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> might not look like what they might connect to being a person that would care. Uh, but Craig uh, reconnected and he was, he was, uh, he was tight with that. The last one is just here when the reunion happened. Uh, we had the reunion here in July. Uh, and uh, it was just sitting out. Craig, you know, and, and during his recovery, uh, was sometimes very cold. He was cold. And so uh, we were out on, on the deck in July, you know, because he was, it was, the AC was too much for him in the house. And we were sitting and talking. 
And, and he, uh, through our conversation, I, I gathered that his relationship with the Lord was still where it needed to be. All right. And his journey had made it even closer than what it was before. Come on now. And so those are comforting reflections. Amen. Amen. Comforting. It's okay for him. He's fine. Okay. But for those of us who were behind, hopefully it gives us a, uh, a connection to what's really important. The last piece of this is this. Uh, a few Sundays ago, uh, Sister Folks came to an altar call for prayer. And Junior came and stood beside her. I came and stood between them. And she lifted the cause of her son before the Lord as a mother. And I, as I saw that mother and father standing, interceding for their child. Come on now. That that made a special impression All right. Yes. All right. to have a mother and father, and, and he's and she's. And so that's not their only time of that, but that was just a moment. <laughs> and she was praying, and they've been praying, and we've been praying as a church family for healing, for restoration, for prayer. Yes. Some of you might think that their prayers were not answered. Yes. They were answered. Yes. Yes. Because this mother will not have to agonize over her son's suffering. Yeah. Matter of fact, she had a ticket to go to see him. She had a ticket ready to go. When she got word that the Lord had said, well, I'm going to take him home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we here uh, at Bethel and, and me as part of this family, I know this family, uh, loves the Lord. Yeah. We love the Lord. He's a God that, uh, as, if, as you've heard, he doesn't make mistakes. He loves us. All right. And everything that he does is for our good. Amen. And so I know now, Craig, this is the last piece I'm sorry. <laughs> Shooting his old as we were sitting there, he said, you know what? He said, when I get to heaven, one of the first things I'm going to do is ask Craig, why did you turn your mama on the football? <laughs> because I cannot get her away from the football game. Why in the world did he do that? And so I know Craig now is, is watching the game, and he will be good when we get to this him. Amen. Bless you. sons were uh, involved in bullying sports. And uh, there came a point where uh, the area that we were living in in the beach at that time, uh, uh, they needed uh, teams. Teams were being formed in football and all of this. And there was a 
there's quite a few uh, wannabe players that uh, were excluded from the, uh, the teams that were formed at that time. So uh, the, uh, there was a, another team that, that needed to be created uh, out of pretty much the leftovers. And uh, I, I had played some football in my life. I, I wasn't really interested in, in coaching kids, but you know, EC was all man. You got all this knowledge. You can do it. You can do it. You can get up there. And, you know what I mean? These guys will follow you there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so pretty much he convinced me to volunteer my services to be a coach. About three weeks later, he's like, "Yeah, well, uh, I'm being transferred to Indonesia." <laughs> <laughs> It's just, you know, it's just me and you, basically, now. So he said, well, got to go. So, yeah, I mean, of course I cussed him out. Uh, and he went to Indonesia, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, the family, and they stayed there for a while. So, you know, I, I got through that season. I was, you know, I, you know it, it, was, it was him, another fellow, and myself, and everybody dropped off. I got through the season. We, I think we won two games. <laughs> and uh, one day in the spring, I get, a, I get a knock on the door, look out there, and it's DC standing there. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Here you go. Back in, we hadn't, we hadn't talked, we hadn't communicated since he was in Indonesia. But, you know, after, after he got back, we struck it back up. And, uh, you know, Sundays was football day. He's a Redskin fan. I'm, I'm, I'm an Eagle fan. Uh, so we would get together. And at that time, we had uh, some small dogs, chihuahuas, that, uh, well, one at a time, we didn't have multiple chihuahuas. But, but he would come over, and we would watch football. And we had a deal that uh, if it was a Redskin home game, so Redskins were playing Eagles and, and uh, they were at home, Redskins at home, that I would travel to his house to watch the game and suffer the indignities. <laughs> and, and if it was the other way around, that he would travel to my house. Um, and uh, we maintained that throughout you know, uh, our relationship until he uh, moved, moved to uh, El Paso. But, you know, I mean, he, he was just such a tremendous fellow, and uh, you know, I'm I'm just just happy and proud that uh, that I knew him and had it, had a chance to be. <laughs> had a chance to be involved in his life. As I spoke to him from time to time from El Paso, I noticed that his, in his voice, not so much what he said, but how he sounded. And I always felt like uh, he, he just didn't sound as strong as he did when he left. From time to time, I would relay that to my wife and some of the guys that we knew here and, and all like that. I never saw him uh, again after he went to El Paso. <clears throat> but we, we tried to uh, stay in touch. But the thing I, the thing I most remember about him is uh, his passion for pool, redskins. Just a, he was just a great fellow. He had a lot of life experiences <coughs> through the Navy, through traveling uh, with his family uh, throughout the country that were invaluable to uh, people like me, you know, raising my son. Uh, and it, it, it kind of all came together. We were watching a game at my house one day. I was the, uh, I was the home team. We were watching the, uh, the Eagles play the Redskins one, and, and they were winning until 
very late in the fourth quarter. Uh, we had a running back at the time named Keith Byers. Uh, and he took a he took like a swing pass and was headed down the sideline. I mean, this guy was booking. And I was all over EC because we were just that far away from winning this game. Until somebody punched the ball out and they recovered. And <laughs> what you, you let me have it, boy. You let me have it right there. And you know, man, it's just, you know, turning uh, uh, victory into defeat. But uh, I was grateful for his friendship. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful to still be uh, in that mode with his family. Thank you. Amen. We have one more reflection from the family. One more. God bless you, sister. I know my dad is smiling from ear to ear right now. I know his grandparents wrapped their wings around him and said, well done, my son, well done. I can see him now in heaven with some sort of head on, straw hat, baseball cap, something, because he was always cold and he always had his hats on. I can see him with some sort of head on, singing and dancing with Michael Jackson and talking Atlanta Braves baseball with Hank Aaron. And of course, talking to Sean Taylor about that incredible Hail Mary catch from a few weeks ago and how good the Commanders are doing this season, well, except for Thursday night's game. But hey, all that matters to him is that the Commanders have a better record than that team with the Blue Star. My dad, my dad loved his grandkids and great-grandkids, affectionately known to them as Dida. Each of them had their own special nickname from their Dida. We would all joke and say in our family that our parents and grandparents have a favorite. Like me, I'm Bonnie Jr.'s favorite. <laughs> but my dad, my dad made every one of his grandkids and great grandkids feel like they were his favorite. Especially my nephew, Xavier. Xavier didn't miss not one doctor's appointment. He would tell my mom, Nana, did Dida get his medicine? Did you get your medicine? And he kept their calendar straight making sure not one appointment was missed. One thing that I remember the most about, well, everything, but with my dad, with his grandkids and great-grandkids was on Christmas Eve, we were at my house, and he was up wrapping presents, telling my mom, hand me the tape, give me this roll of paper, give me that, give me the Batman, give me the Superman. He wasn't like that with us. My mom did all the Christmas. <laughs> but to see him with his grandkids, he would take them to the zoo, to the park. He never missed one of Dominic's games because he was there in El Paso with us. And that just blew my mind. He would also tell my mom at least once a week, Cat, let's take Dominic to Chuck E. Cheese. I would always say, who are you? And what did you do to Emmanuel Craig Folk Sr.? <laughs> my family would like to thank you all for your kind expressions of sympathy. The love you have shown has given us great comfort during this difficult time. It is deeply appreciated and will forever be remembered to us. Rest well, Dad. Justice, EC, Jason, Tabitha, Dion, and I promise to take care of Mom. We love you. Amen. Let's give God another praise for those fantastic and wonderful reflections on the life of uh, Brother Craig. And at this time, as you read the obituary, I'd like to do something that reminds us with joy that if you want to know where I'm going, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord, E flat. Amen.
son, father, brother, grandfather, great-grandfather, relative, and friend, Brother Craig Folks. Let the church say amen. amen. So glad for these uh, wonderful uh, preachers of the gospel who are all here today, all the ministers of the gospel. Would you please stand that the family might know that you came to honor them today. Would you please stand and show them some love. Zion Adam Roberts, Zion Adam Herbert, all other ministers, God bless you. As you see it, thank you for coming. And to the family, it is our hope that what you experience in this service today will strengthen you in the days ahead. I've been knowing Craig since becoming a pastor of this church since 2001. And, my, and as Brother Elliot said, my best memory of him was when he came to our multi-week experiencing God a session. And uh, he rededicated his life to the Lord. Can you give God a praise? Uh, you, know, you don't understand. You don't understand. He 
of members of this church, uh, the folks family. You know, this is one of your home churches. Come on, folks family. Can I get a witness in here? And so we thank God it was not long ago that you celebrated a family reunion uh, in this place. And we're so glad that Craig was able to make it. And he was able to enjoy the fellowship with him. You ought to give God a praise. God gave him the strength. It wasn't easy, but he made it. Amen. They always invite me to the family reunion festivities, and uh, I feel as though I should be sitting in the family with y'all. This is a family full of faith and trust in God, and that same God that brought you to this point through other moments like this will bring you through because he is able to do all things. There is a word from the Lord, beloved. Romans, the eighth chapter beginning with verse number 31. The chapter of Romans, beginning with verse number 31, the text declares, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything into the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies, it is he who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again. Yeah. Who is even, church, at the right hand of God, yeah. make it an intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. And all these things, we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But for this message, sermonic thought, this thought must have a theme. Let this be it, something to keep you something to keep you. I was, I was pondering uh, sermonically what I would say to this loving family. I wanted to make sure that this would be an enduring word. A word passed today and a word that you could use the rest of your life that will keep you after the last chord of the organ is played and when the phone calls and cards don't come in as frequently. I stopped by to tell you that there's one thing that will keep and sustain you, and that is love. Uh, because of the love of this family, we've come from all over this broad land and country to support them. And if you want to know what would keep you again, it's the love of God. And in fact, if you want to know the chief cap character of God, First John four and eight tells us, "He that loveth, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love." He also said in 1 John 4, 16, and we have known and believed that love that God has towards us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Reverend Jeffrey said, how do I know that God loves me? I know it because love has to be shown. Love is not what you say, but love is what you do. A lot of folks talk about how much they love you, but real love is what you do. And John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for the whole world, for you and for me and for Craig. Somebody ought to give God a praise. 
Uh, when you think of Jesus, you just know that Jesus is the embodiment of God's love towards us. In Jesus, we find the act of God's love. In Jesus, we find the completeness of God's love. In Jesus, we find the power of God's love. In Jesus, we find the wisdom of God's love. In Jesus, we see the eternal sacrifice of God's love because the Bible said that Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. And Jesus, God gave us not only what we wanted, but what we needed. Love is about giving, and this kind of love reminds me of the love of God. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, Paul writes something about love. I'm talking about something to keep. He writes something about love, but he sets this up. He said in verse 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? He said, if you want proof that God loves you, he was willing to give his son. And if God was willing to give you his very best, if he was willing to give his only begotten son, why would you think that God's got your back? I'm so glad that there's some things that I may not know, but I'm so glad that God has your back. In verse 33, he wanted you to know that you can lift up your head because you got some haters out here. And he said that who can lay a charge to God's elect? In other words, since God has got my back, even my enemies can't bring up charges against my life. Is there anybody in here that's glad that the blood of Jesus covers you from all unrighteousness? Some of you wonder, what do I have to praise God for? You can praise him because you're redeemed and washed in the blood of the Lamb. Can I get a witness in here? Like verse 33, he said, who will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the love of Christ. I'm getting excited. We are here in this place. We can shout the victory because of the love of Christ. We can celebrate with Craig and Craig's family because of the love of Christ. And we know that Paul wanted to know who can separate us from the love of Christ. Listen, since the dawn of humanity, Satan has tried, been trying to separate man from the love of God. Satan can't stand for you to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Saw so Adam and Eve in love with God in the garden and brought sin to try to separate them from the love of God. And all through the Bible, when Satan saw the love of God, he tried to break it up and separate them from the love of God. And I believe I've got some witnesses that have seen Satan try to step in, even in moments like this. Can I get a witness in here? But in the face of all that, Paul can say, who? It's going to try to separate us from the love of God. Paul can say that because he had experienced the love of God for himself. And I'm so glad that Craig experienced the love of Jesus for himself. Papa may have and mama may have, but God bless the child that got his own. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The thing that frightens the devil is whenever you get a good taste of the love of God. David said, oh, taste <laughs> and see that the Lord is good. If you ever get hooked on the taste of God's love, you'll be hooked on his love forever. I'm talking about a taste of the real love of God. I don't mean that fake stuff. I don't mean that sometimey stuff. I'm talking about that enduring, eternal love of God. Anybody know the love of God will leave you want more and more? I'm so glad I can say that Craig loved the Lord. And as he was getting closer to him, God, he could not get enough of the love of God. Can I talk about the love of God for a few moments? God's love is affirming and enlightening. God's love is warm and reassuring. God's love never fails. God, God's love will make you shout. God's love will make you cry. And nobody knows what you're crying about. God's love will fill you with hope and blessedness. The love of God is awesome and blessed. Anybody know that the love of God will keep you? And the more love of God you get, the more love of God you want. And I declare that God's love family will pull you through the toughest time. Because I tried them and I know that God's love never fails. Let me tell you something. Satan will try to use moments like this to separate you from the love of God. But I pray under the anointing of God that the Spirit of God will open up your heart and say, Love lifted me. Where nothing else could. Uh, 
Anybody in here know that when you got a taste of the love of God, yeah. it changed your life. Yeah. Some of you used to be mean and can't take it. Yeah. I ain't scared of you, but God's love made you sweet. Some of you used to be insecure and fearful, but God's love made you bold. Some of you used to have low self-esteem, but now you can say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The love of God will have you singing with tears in your eyes, even at the folks that have been talking about you. You can still say, yes, Jesus loves me. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm a manly man. I'm a macho man. But I don't mind saying Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible. No can tells me so. Anybody in here can say, I love the Lord. And he heard my cry. And he pitied every groan. Long as I live, when trouble rises, I will hasten. Anybody want to run to him? I just don't want that love so much. I, <laughs> he said, who's going to separate us? I want to, I want to look at whatever is in this life and say, God's love is too good for me to let go. Yeah, we've been through some stuff. Sometimes you don't understand and sometimes you got questions. But I'm a witness. God's love is too good to let go. Church, let me tell you this, because you love God does not mean you're not going to have problems. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Paul lists some stuff. I'm out of here. He said, I'm going to tell you the stuff that's going to try to separate you. Tribulation, distresses of all kinds, people going to persecute you. Sometimes you're going to have some problem getting enough food. Sometimes people are going to try to threaten your life. But when Paul thought about all the stuff that the devil could throw at him, that stuff he had already experienced, he said, oh, it's too late now. Devil, you should have killed me when you had a chance. You should have discouraged me when you had a chance. But I know too much. For he said, I am persuaded that neither death no life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come. I know too much shall separate me from the love of God. Come here, Grandma. Grandma used to say it like this. You can't make me doubt it. I know too much about him. Somebody say it. Can you give God a praise? Say it. And I can separate the, separate the love of God. Because in the moment that Craig accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, he immediately received eternal life. And now he lives forever. Oh, bless his name, church. Somebody said, Craig is dead. Oh, but the devil is a liar. I declare that Craig is more alive than ever. He's experiencing things he only dreamed of. He's more powerful now. He's more aware now. He's got more joy. Thank God for the teams he had joy for. But the joy that God gives, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Somebody say it. Yeah. Because of the love of Jesus, Craig only tasted death one time. He died to this life, but now, give your neighbor a high five and say, but now he lives forevermore. Somebody say, yeah, I heard Jesus say, because I live, you shall live also. And if you believe in me, you won't perish, but have everlasting life. Say, yeah, there is a land of pure delight where 
saints in mortal range. Infinity day excludes the night. Somebody say yeah. I'm so glad. The last time I saw Craig, his steps were getting a little shorter. His movement was not as strong. But I'm so glad he's in that land where every moment is a memento. Every second is scintillated. Every minute is magnificent. Every hour is a hallelujah. Every day is a diadem. Every week is wonderful. Every month is marvelous. And every year is his to praise God. Say yeah. I heard the hymn writer say, when we have been there, ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've got no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Say yeah. Say yeah. Y'all got to excuse me, but I got to praise the Lord. The devil didn't get him. God's got him. God has rewarded him. And I hear him say, well done, that good and faithful servant. Say yeah. Say yeah. I know you got tears in your eyes. And I know you got questions. But can you take a few moments and give God the glory. Give it to him. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has. For I am persuaded. I've been in this thing too long. Ain't nothing gonna turn me or you around. Don't let the enemy, he gonna try. I'm telling you, that joker is sneaky. He gonna try all kinds of stuff to separate you from the love of God. But I'm a witness if you just hang in there. Anybody got some know that you know that you know religion? I just know too much. Somebody said it's too late to turn back now. Come on, give God a praise in this house. Something to keep the love of God will keep you. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we're ever so grateful and we're ever so thankful. First of all, for the love of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nobody like him. There's some people who think that they can vote themselves into supremacy but you said at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord we thank you Lord that Craig solidified his relationship with you so he's alright Lord there's somebody might be in this house that don't know you and the pardon of their sins some have been waiting some have been saying I'm fitting to get ready I get ready after a while. Yeah. Heavenly Father, you said in your word, now is the appointed time to get right with God and to do it right now. There, there might be someone in here. They may not know you, the partner of said. There may be some family member that traveled up and down dangerous highways. Yes, to honor Craig. But I know Craig with every fiber of his being would say, give your life to Christ. Well, there is still yet time. You're in the building, if you're in the house, if you've never given Jesus Christ your life, this is personal. Yes. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Yes. Nobody's looking around. Yes. Doesn't down. matter what anybody Speak thinks down. anyway. Yes. You're here, you've never given Jesus yes. Christ your life. Don't yes. let yes. this yes. 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 You wonder why we can have joy in the have midst of what we're going through. It's because of the love of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You've never experienced that. You want to accept that for yourself. Amen. Sometimes we come together as families. And sometimes we're sure about everything, but, if, but we're not sure of everybody's sake. I want everybody in the house, repeat this prayer after me. If you mean it with your heart, you are saved. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. If you mean it with your heart, you are saved. Repeat after me, dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord Jesus. Thank, you. thank you for 
for dying on the cross for my sins. I thank you that you received Craig, but one day I want you to receive me. I believe that you died and you were buried and you rose for my victory. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Spirit of the living God, help me to say that nothing will separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Everybody. If you pray that prayer for the first time, find you a good Bible believing church. Why right, you want to come here, that's fine. But if you're somewhere, don't use it to make no excuses. Don't get in no church politics. I'm going to say that again. Just go on and serve the Lord. Amen. Certainly, we want to honor Craig's magnificent and esteemed service to the United States Navy. Yeah. And at this time, we're gonna ask all except the family who will stand for the military honors. And they want me to let you know that the gunshots will be coming from this side. You stay there so that you won't be startled. Everyone except for the family, please stand. For those that are able, please rise for the rendering of military honors. Military personnel, please cover and remain covered for the rendering of military honors.
Lord, by his means of dove, I fly away and be at rest. I will hail from the stormy tempest to find me a home. A far where the wicked will cease from trouble, and the weary will be at rest. If I gave you one of these roses right now today, five or maybe ten days, it will wither away. That's the key. Family and friends, we thank you for your services to this family and to this church. May God bless and comfort and keep each and every one of you in his care. We also would like to thank the family, their sisters, their fathers, their parents, and even you. We raise them right. Hold on. We thank you for your services on behalf of Smith Brothers Funeral Home of Hampton, Virginia. And may God bless, comfort, and keep you all. Amen. Thank you so very much. Uh, at this time, as we receive uh, for the family members and out of town guests, uh, we're inviting you to a repass, and the ushers uh, will lead you uh, over to this area over here uh, and that they'll, they'll guide you to where you need to be. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done.